Okay, hi, I'm the professor from Old Ways New, New Times, and this is Bearded Brother. Now, we've all been home for a while and got a honey-do list of things to do. We wanted to talk about some tools that everyone should have to help you with those projects. Now, first things first, it's not really a tool, but duct tape. If it moves and you don't want it to, that's a temporary fix for a lot of things. And as they say in the South, if you can't duck it, you should probably buy a new one. Now, as you're putting things up, and nobody says that, you're putting things up, you want to make sure they're level because, well, if the shelf's on an angle, things roll off, fall on the floor, and it kind of defeats the purpose. You use one of these. It's a level. It's a pretty simple tool. If it's level, there's a bubble in the middle of this gauge that lines up between lines. When it's in there, you're level, and you can also use it on the vertical edge to check the flush or plumb of something. You can get it level or straight up and down. So, make sure your things are the way you want them. Now, you have to put nails in. The most common thing to a lot of folks have is a, a claw hammer for knocking them in or pulling them out. Yeah, that's that work. This is a framing hammer. It's a very similar to a claw hammer, but it has a slightly different function. This is more for getting under, like, on a roof and pulling up shingles and whatnot. But uh, in, in a pinch, it can serve the same as an indoor claw hammer. Which one will help build an arc with all this rain? Uh, either one, and as hard as it's raining, probably both to get it done quicker. Well, then you're going to need to cut some wood for your arc. Let's use a wood saw. Well, that's kind of small for arc level building, but for small projects around the house, you don't need to cut as much. You use a small saw. You can tell a wood saw from a uh, hacksaw or whatnot, metal cutting saw, by the tooth pattern and the depth of them. Wood saw. Uh, Hacksaw, jigsaw. Hacksaw. Hacksaw. Just jigsaw is totally good. Okay. Hacksaw is a metal cutting blade, it's very fine tooth, and it's used. You know, this one obviously would be for small jobs because it's a, it's a little short saw, but sometimes it's really handy. Uh, metal piping and like PVC, right? You can you cut PVC with it. Metal mainly, a hacksaw is for. Another tool that you'll find very useful around the house is pliers. Now these. These are slip joint pliers, as I am told. If you notice, it opens the mouth at a slightly different angle, gives you a little bit more grip, and can handle a slightly slight variety in jobs. But it also has this groove at the bottom for wire cutting, which is opposed to... Well, if you need to grip something larger, these are called channel locks. Now, when you open these up, there's a whole lot of different settings in there, so you can get rather sizable objects in there to grip hold of. Now, one other thing I will say about tools while we're talking about it, these particular channel locks I've had for a long time. You can tell they've got a patina, they're aged. I've had these for over 25 years. When you buy your tools, you want to buy quality. They'll last, they'll serve you well. Buy once, cry once. As you buy your tools, get good stuff, otherwise the cheap stuff's going to fail when you need it the most. Well, since we were talking about pliers, let's go ahead and sometimes you need to get a little bit farther in with your pliers, and those aren't going to do it. These are needle nose pliers, and once again, uh, they have a wire cutting tool. But this is for the uh, slightly out of reach, harder to get to places. You can get back in there. Nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. Now, if you need to reach in and grab something, this type of tool is called a locking plier. You grip down. There's a little lever here that it'll latch in place, hold tight. When you hit this, it'll open up. You can use this to hold things in place while you're working on it. You can like, like a min miniature clamp to hold things or wherever. So you've got different pliers, hammers. Um, another thing you're going to need, sometimes you have bolts you need to turn. Pliers are not the tool for that. This is an adjustable wrench. You can vary the depth different size bolts. If you don't have exactly the socket of the tool you need, which he's going to show you some of those, this is kind of a, a multi-purpose, one size fits many. This is a ratchet and this is a socket. Now, they fix, but they're a different size socket so you can adjust your the size of what you're working on it as you need. Um, and then there are different size ratchets. This is for small projects. There are bigger, there are massive ones for like your 18-wheeler lug lugs and whatnot, but I guess they just use like an impact hammer there, but... You can use whatever you need. There's yeah. all kinds yeah. of tools, but 
common household tools, the different size sockets, you have one for each size nut that will fit what you need to turn. Different drive a, sides, sorry, well you were talking about sizes, different drive size will take more or less torque as you turn things. You want to turn things, you know, kind of size that to the job, otherwise you'll twist those off. And you might be thinking, look, it goes great one direction. There's a little toggle on the back you can change, tighten, loosen, on the fly, whatever you need to do. So, use a socket set, wrenches to tighten and, um, nuts and bolts and things, not pliers. Uh, screwdrivers, if you Talk need about to. tightening things, loosening things, screwdrivers. Well, or screws. Now there's different screwdrivers. Phillips is the kind of cross-pointed one. There's a slotted, like flathead, not a butter knife. I mean, they work. Yeah, but a quarter can use can work depending on the project and not recommended. Okay, properly sized tools, a tool for the job, the job for the tool. Use the ones that you're supposed to. It'll go much better because once you strip out that screw that you're trying to turn with a butter knife, then you're going to need more tools to get that screw out. Now, uh, if you if you have an issue with space or you don't want this many, you can buy something like this, which is a multi-set screwdriver. As you can see, there's a flathead, and it goes all the way around. There's your Phillips, and it's got a jewelers and so on. So for compact, easy, you can get a multi-tool like this, or you can get a good set like this, so you have your options available. Now, when you're working on these projects, we talked about saws to cut things. You need to make sure you cut it to the right length. So we have tape measures. Can you, you use a small child? I mean, you can, but there's a lot of variants. Is it a metric child? Is it a standard? <laughs> do they come imperial? I don't know. But you know what I do know? This is a uniform measurement. The other thing is, how long has it been since the last time you actually measured the child as a reference? Because they could grow. You know? I know. Calibration's an issue. There you go. So, tape measures. Tape measure. You measure the actual length instead of a calibrated eyeball or, well, you could use a wag measurement, but then this kind of defeats the purpose of measuring in the first place. Use a tape measure. Now, a place where measurements really count, when you're locating a stud to hang like a picture or put some shelves, maybe you're mounting a bookshelf case you want to farm against the wall. Oh, come on. You use a stud finder. It measures density in the wall, and so it'll beep when it finds something dense. Oh, it must be broken. I don't know. We try this if it's dense over here. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's right. Okay. Dense in there. All right, so you use your stud finder. You find one stud. Once you do, they're going to be 16 inches apart. It makes it easier to find the next one. That's where. No, not the small child, but the tape measure comes in. Measure twice, cut once. Okay. And then uh, a final thing that you should always have, it's not, again, in the same vein as duct tape, not necessarily a tool, uh, but a, a good flashlight, because you're going to be working at some point in, sorry, dark. <laughs> it's like, nooks I didn't need that red. No, that's, that's okay. All right, good. You got the other one. So, uh, a good flashlight to help you see when you're working with, like, your needles, pliers, and the nooks and crannies. You're going to need light under a counter. And, in the know, closet. Sure, you know, yeah. If the power goes out and you're trying to find the, repair the fuse panel so you can get it back on. Yeah. What about the bendable flashlights? I mean, they're, they're nice, but it, just a general flashlight. This one is a little bit more fancy because it's got a magnet so I can stick it places. And this is a work light. So. <coughs> now, you have all your tools. I have this nice project caddy keep things in. I have a set of stuff that I keep in the house so that when something happens I have more tools out stored away. But the stuff I use all the time rides in the caddy so that when I need to fix something I can grab it and go. Some sort of a way to organize your tools so you know where they are. When you need something you can find it. Because having it but having it someplace you know that doesn't Less really than work. helpful. So we've talked about tools you should have around the house. We've given you the rough idea of what some of the tools you should have are and why you should have them. If you find this video useful, like and subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get notifications when we post more of these. Um, we're also on Instagram and on Facebook at Old Ways New Times. So check us out there. Follow all the stuff that we're doing. And as always, have a blessed day and share your knowledge.